Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this week's Monday Motivation. If you've never watched one of these before, my name's Jenny Povax. I'm lovingly known as the Queen of Being Seen because helping you to stand out in front of the people who you so want to recognise your work, your value, and to help you get promoted is why I get out of bed in the morning, especially this morning. So for those of you that are watching live and you are um, maybe new to this, do post your comments, your thoughts, your questions in the box below. So Monday Motivation started in around 2008 when I was working in financial services, I was a senior training manager and I wanted a way to stop Mondays from getting a bad rap. Some people were thinking that Mondays were the start to their week but there was something to be dreaded, something to be feared and I thought, you know what, if you're going to get going on a Monday, why not get started with a fire in your belly? Why not get started with raring to go? Why not get started with being completely motivated, not only for your Monday, for your morning, for your day and for your week? So that's where Monday Motivation started and they actually started as a um, an email that was being sent out and then as time went on and technology moved forward they then became something that started to be live so that I could interact with you like Alan who said good morning good morning Alan um, so if you or someone you know could do with a bit of a boost this Monday please feel free to click the share button send it to them in a private message or um, put a comment below and let them know that this is available for you, for me, and for them. So, the subject of this morning is Blue Monday, and I'm not even gonna apologize for the fact that this is called Blue Monday. So, in the press, and this has actually started off by a PR company, um, I believe circa 2005. Blue Monday is um, written about quite widely in the press. It's a Monday that's in January, and um, some people are saying there's an actual equation to it, that it's the third or the fourth or even the fifth Monday of January where, you know, um, depending on which part of the world you're living in, you may have been celebrating Christmas, your bank account might be a little bit more depleted than usual, and as you head into a new year with new aspirations and new starts, this apparently is the time of year where your confidence might start to be knocked in that area. This is why this is known as Blue Monday. So Ian's saying, hey up Jenny, good morning, good morning Ian. It's a tad chilly here in London this morning compared to the sunny shores of Barbados. But I've got my, I've still got my t-shirt on so I can't be that cold with my, my jumper over the top. So um, I had an absolutely awesome holiday, thank you for asking. So. The reason I wanted to um, to share this Monday motivation is um, because I I believe that um, some people may have indeed be waking up this morning, <laughs> tomorrow morning, yesterday, last week, next week, and feeling a little bit blue. So one thing that I want to start off with is um, if your blueness lasts for quite a lot of the year and you go into dips and starts, ups and downs and there is any possibility that it may be slightly more than feeling a bit blue, may be a little bit depressed, do seek the help that is out there. Do seek, whether it's medical help, whether it's help of a charity like Mind um, or any other of those really great resources that are out there, do go out and, um, and, and get advice. So what I'm going to talk to, talk to today are a couple of ways um, that you can kind of give yourself a pep if and when needed, especially on a Monday, especially in the morning, and especially um, as you go into this new year with your dreams, your thoughts, your aspirations. So I'm going to share a couple of different ways in which you can which you can um, really really start to. Um, navigate and choose how you want your time to be, how you want your year to be, how you want your Monday, your morning or your week to be too. So um, if you, as I'm going through this, if it, if it sparks comments, whoops, I've just pressed something on my screen which made my screen go funny. Um, if you've got comments, if you've got questions, 
type them in the box below. If you've got friends who you know could um, could use any of this information, do click on the share button. If you're in maybe a group or you're allowed to share, by all means do. But this is a perfect share for you to share on your timeline because you never know who of your Facebook friends might want to reach out but might not just have the words to reach out. So, a couple of different things. Now, um, many people in the world, worldwide, will carry around um, a little token of something, usually a picture, a photograph of somebody precious to them. Uh, it could be in their wallet, it could be in their pocket, it could be, you know, um, anywhere on their person, in their bag or, or, or anywhere else. And the reason that people will tend to do that, it could be a person, it could be a place, it could be somewhere gorgeous, um, it's because when they look at that picture, it reminds them of somebody or something, um, and usually it reminds them of an element of their personality or character which has a warm place in their heart. So this visual representation ends up having a, a, an emotional representation. Now here's the thing to know about the brain. When you are um, looking at a gorgeous picture, scenery, or you know, reminiscing about something, as this morning, the only blue in my mind are the blues in the seas and the skies of Barbados. When we're reminiscing and going back to those thoughts and those feelings and those visuals almost, our brain doesn't know that it's not happening right now. And because it doesn't know that it's not happening right now, it starts firing off all of its feel-good factors. So while some of us have that picture or memory of our loved one that we carry around, why not choose in advance to create something that you know is going to make you feel great? And before you say, oh my gosh, that's so hard, it's not possible, it's not doable, think again. So many of us have got into the habit, have got used to um, how it feels to not feel so great will remind ourselves over and over and over again of how rubbish we are at something. And I'll come on and use another example of how we do that in a moment. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to choose a person who makes you feel warm and fuzzy, a, a view maybe that you've got in your mind um, of when you felt really great, really uplifted or even really motivated. The thing is to choose the emotion that you want to feel first and then look at something that you can associate with that emotion. You know, and um, people make vision boards at this time of year and there's no coincidence that a vision board is made and lots of pictures are stuck up with, with things that remind people of the things that they want to achieve or the feelings that they want to have in that particular moment. And if you do create a vision board, then put, put it somewhere where you'll see it every day. Um, Jack Canfield talks a lot about, um, in his success principle books, about going for what you want, going for your dreams. And he speaks especially to um, his journey of when he wrote a book and he wanted to be able to sell it and reach a lot of people and make money. And his journey along the way and how he, how he used to stick a hundred dollar bill on the ceiling. Now, although that might seem like a strange thing to do, imagine that every morning when you wake up, the first thing you see is something on your ceiling which reminds you of the choice that you want to make to have in your day. Imagine that. So if there's an emotion that you want to feel on a regular basis, it might be to feel more joyful, might be more fun, might be more connection or anything else like that, might be just more kind of gend up, juiced up and motivated, then why not think about sticking a photo might be on your ceiling it might be somewhere where you can see it on a regular basis so that not only are you seeing the thing that you that you want to feel or want to be but you're feeling the thing too now this brings me on to the point I was um, going to make a few moments back I over the years have helped so many people with public speaking some of those people have been very nervous some of those people have been very confident but just wanting to convey themselves in a really great way and others have been really confident, quite happy they convey themselves in a great way, but there's a certain amount of impact that they want to make, attention that they need to get, focus that needs to be on their message. So for that, 
there was one thing that at the very start I tended to see over and over and over again and it's not to say that it's not there now I think I've just become so used to it coming up and one often when I would take people through an exercise to help them get into their best frame of mind to give the best presentation that they wanted to give Instead of going for the thing or the emotion or the feeling that they wanted to in that presentation, they would still be clinging quite heavily to how they perceived a presentation made them feel. So remembering back one particular person I had this conversation with, they said, I hate public speaking. I hate standing in front of the audience. I hate the fact that they look at me. I hate the fact that I go red. My neck flushes. Everyone knows I'm embarrassed and it's cringeworthy. And they probably spent close to like 10 minutes telling me about how bad public speaking made them feel and everything else. Now, if we take the, um, the example that I used in part one, the step one of this, in having a, a visual or something that you can see on a regular basis that reminds you of how you want to feel and how you want to be. If you think about this, the reason that we can allow ourselves to be blue or feel low or feel down is because of where we put our attention and where we put our focus. So think about this. This woman was focusing on all the reasons why she didn't like public speaking, all the reasons why not to love it, the people looking at her, she's going red, how she feels. Instead of looking at all the reasons why you don't want to do something, don't like to do something, why not have a look at the reasons why you would love to do the thing? So instead of looking at everybody looking at you, feeling embarrassed, red, and all that kind of stuff and going red, why not change the dial a bit, change the direction to feeling empowered, feeling confident, everybody's looking at, the, at you but hanging on to your every word. People are really, uh, really being attentive. People are engaged. People are asking questions. People are really um, f feeling the change in your words. Why not focus and, and change your focus on something else? And this is true, as they say on Blue Monday, it could be about finances. It could be about emotion. It could be about um, you decided to do something and you feel like you fell off at the first hurdle already then make the decision to get back on the horse and ride it make the decision to go back um and start a fresh start again you know tomorrow is another day you know one of the things um that came to me a few days ago as i was sitting on the beach was um as i sat there kind of like looking over the sea listening to the sounds of the waves I'd watch people walking up and down the beach and as they walked up and down the beach they would leave these big footprints in the sand. Now the beach could have said to itself oh my gosh I was all nice and pristine and clean until somebody went tramping over the sand and leaving these big footprints and oh my gosh what am I going to do but instead nature takes its course the waves come crashing in and crashing out. And as the waves crash in, they run over the footprints, and by the time the wave gets drawn back into the sea, it's all fresh and new again. And people say, oh well, tomorrow is another day. But actually, you have a new hour every day, a whole 24 of them. You have a new um, minute within that hour, a whole 60 of them. If something doesn't work out in the way that maybe you wanted it to, if something um, doesn't happen in the way that you thought it would and you find yourself dwelling on what went wrong instead of what could go differently next time or what could be different next time, then why not, why not take the attitude of the sea and think, okay, deep breath, you know what, tomorrow is another day, this is something different, it, I'm starting with a fresh, fresh slate, okay, the next hour is another new hour. I'm going to start afresh. Why not think I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now, give myself five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and then come back and start with a clean slate. It really is that simple. We just need to choose to decide to do that. We just need to choose to decide what we want and then look forward, keep our eyes forward and go for it. 
So then the third thing that I'd like to share with you on this um, Blue Monday is the power of not only being able to decide and being able to choose, but the power of staying really present, staying right here, right now, because the one thing I know for sure is when we look back in the past, we become quite stressed. We can become quite, um, quite worried because we're looking back. And when we're looking back, there's, there's no harm in looking back doing an over the shoulder check. But when we spend our whole lives looking back at something we perceived was better back then and isn't anymore, so, for example, you know, I've just spent a week in, you know, most beautiful, gorgeous scenery, the most beautiful com um, country. And it's great to look back and remember some of those views, some of the people, the experiences and things like that. But if I spend the rest of this year looking back and filling myself with almost like a regret, what kind of year do you think I'm going to have? The same goes the other way when we go too far in the future. We get too worried, too concerned about what's coming up in the future. Does anyone re resonate with that? Resignate? Resonate with that. Get my teeth in. Have you had an experience in life? It, you don't have to say what it is here on this, on this page or in the comments. Um, but have you had an experience where there's something that you really maybe want so badly that you look into the future? And you take it in great big strides, great big gulps, great big gallops, so much so that it starts to make you feel anxious because you feel aware that you're not there where you want to be yet, but you feel anxious. So one of the best ways to stop looking in the past, stop comparing with our own lives or someone else's, and to stop trying to gallop so far into the future is to stay really present and ask yourself, what can I do about this right now? What can I do here and now to make the next difference to my life? What can I do to um, move myself forward? But what can I do that's easy and something that I can do right now? And the thing might not feel easy, but like they say, if you're going to eat an elephant, it's best to eat it bite by bite. No elephants were harmed in the making of this Monday Motivation. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this has been of some use and some help to you. And for those of you that haven't found it yet, there's the Visibility Vibes Tribe Facebook group where quite often we can continue the conversations way after the Monday Motivation Live has finished. So if you or someone else you know want to talk more about what's going on for you, what you want to be more motivated about this Monday, then go over to Facebook and um, Either go to the Queen of Being Seen Facebook page where you can click to join the group. Alternatively, put in the facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash be seen, be heard, get visible. Click to join the group. And in that group, it's a closed group. So your friends and family will not know what you've been posting in the group. Only the other people in the group who are there, by the way, to lovingly support you, encourage you and give you a pep up if you're feeling down. So if there was an extra tip I was going to give is to surround yourself with people that truly support you. So if you're working within an organisation, maybe you're a senior leader in that organisation. Maybe you are um, working in a business by yourself. Maybe you're just going to work and doing your everyday thing. Have people around you that are your cheerleaders, that are, you know, think in a positive way, that can really pull you up if you're feeling down. That's one of the best ways I know to get through this Blue Monday or any other Monday for that matter. So thank you so much for joining me. Lots of love to you, Ian and Alan, for your comments that you've put below. And those of you that have been hopping on and hopping off. And if you're watching this on the replay, pop a comment below. Um, let me know what you uh, what, like, which one nugget you've taken from this and you're going to look at or do differently for at least the rest of this week. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.